Hey y'all, Ramdino here, coming at you again for another Appalachian Trail community news, through hiker update, and trail information. Well, last week, missed a week there. If you've been a subscriber to my channel for any time, you know that I typically put out a weekly update about what's going on with the Appalachian Trail, but unless I'm out there on the trail myself and this uh, particular week, last week, Trail Boss and I had the opportunity to go out and enjoy a different type of trail. And so we went with some folks from the church and uh, just friends from the church. Wasn't really a church outing or anything, just friends from the church there. But anyway, we went to Yellowstone National Park and got to snowmobile through throughout the park. And there's no cars allowed during this particular time of the year because the snowpack is so thick out there. But we had an absolute ball. Probably going to be dropping a video about that. Uh, sometime in the near future, but we had saw lots of animals, saw bison, uh, saw a very rare thing going on in the park, and that was a bobcat eating its prey, saw coyote, and just uh, had a blast. So it was a great time out there. Be sharing that with you later on. Uh, but anyway, thanks for allowing me to get out there and do that. So what is going on with the trail? Well, today it's kind of rainy here in the foothills of North Carolina, so I'm bringing it inside, and that's what's going on out there on the trail as well. Looks like folks out there have experienced a little bit of uh, dampness uh, this uh, this past couple of days, and it looks like the day's not going to be an exception, and the rest of the week looks like it's going to be a kind of wet one as well, as well as it's going to be getting down into uh, the low temps, a uh, couple nights, there'll be some places that it may actually get below freezing, particularly at elevation. So people need to be sleeping with their electronics, particularly sleeping with their water filter device. So their Sawyer squeezes, they will get uh, loaded up with water, even if you shake them out, and they'll freeze, and then they are no good. And even though water may run through them, it will still be, could possibly be contaminated water. So you'll have to get another one if they freeze like that. So make sure that you uh, trade that in or, or rather buy a new one whenever you get to your next resupply, if that happens to you. So let's talk about what's going on out there on there with the trail and the hikers. So we still got some 2022 Sobo folks that started 2022. We got Jen on the trail who I had identified. Trail name is White Sox before I'd gotten uh, misinterpreted some information. Her trail name is actually Diesel. But she is continuing on her Sobo hike, and she has made it to Tennessee, and that is awesome. Congratulations to, to, for her. Tennessee is a short state, so she'll be in North Carolina and down to or just having uh, North Carolina and Georgia before you know it. But she did have a near hypothermic episode out there, so she got cold and wet. And that happens, and she was smart enough to get inside and get into a hostel, get dried out for a couple of days, avoid uh, the next day's wet, cold weather coming up. And uh, so she is back out on the trail. And she actually met some other Sobos while uh, she was doing that. She met Prometheus and Potholder, and my understanding is that they're hiking together now. So they are somewhere less than 400 miles to Springer. So that is awesome. Uh, and then we've also got Turtleback. So he's made it to Irwin, Tennessee. Uh, he also had some eventful weather this week, traveling through Watauga Lake and the Roan Mountain region. Uh, it did get warm enough to melt the snow up around Roan Mountain, so he got some awesome, awesome views up there. That always reminds me of the sound of music and probably my favorite place so far on the AT that I have been throughout my uh, hiking experiences. Uh, but he did run into some unforecasted hail uh, and he had to cut a day's hike short and actually turn around and hike back a mile to the closest shelter. Uh, and that way, uh, he made sure that he was dry and warm that night, didn't have any kind of issues. And he said it seemed right that he hiked the next few days in three inches of snow uh, because uh, because it, he got a lot of snow that particular night. So. Uh, but he is closing in fast on Springer and finishing up his uh, 2022 hike. So what's going on out there with the folks for 2023? Well, we don't have a lot of folks on the trail that are reporting in right now. So you folks that are out there, can, uh, please report into me. Let me know, uh, update us so that I can let the masses out there know and the rest of the hiker community know if that's something you're interested in. 
uh, be looking forward to hearing those from you either through email or through IM links that are down below. But Jeff and Maya, they have made it to North Carolina and they said they should be in Franklin any day now. So that the weather had been nice for them, a little windy, a little warmer, but still being okay. Uh, they had some issues um, with uh, one of the shelters there. They had uh, down in Georgia, they reported a bear box at Woodhole Shelter, said it was infested with mice and had trash in it, that hikers had left trash in there. So those are not trash receptacles, hikers. Uh, those are just places you're supposed to store overnight your uh, bags for your food bags and even your packs to keep mice and stuff off of them. But there was one that was infested with mice a lot of times those are just toolboxes and they've got a drain plug in the bottom of them. You really need to put a rock over that drain plug to keep, and then you pack on top of that to keep any mice out of that. But in, in any case, they reported and look, they said apparently the uh, Georgia AT Club had got, to, got the message and they cleaned it out the very next day. So they did an awesome job. So uh, thanks a lot, Georgia Club down there. They always do a wonderful, wonderful job down in Georgia. And they have, you know, they really have the most hikers that come through there, through Georgia. So they get the most amount of, of the Nobo folks because most people kind of make it through Georgia or make it at least uh, the first few days to Neil's Gap uh, before they quit. So they have really a tough job out there, tough job maintaining the trails because they get so much abuse and traffic on them and and uh, around the shelters and stuff like that. So kudos out there for y'all to do that. And that's the thing about the, the clubs out there. The clubs are the heart and soul of the trail and the hiker community. So the ATC, all they care about is the treadway. They don't really care about the hikers. But the clubs out there, while they care about the treadway because they're doing maintenance and the shelters on it, they also generally care about the hikers out there. So we greatly appreciate anything they can do out there. Uh, Prepper, he made it to Dix Creek Gap. And so right after Dix Creek Gap is the North Carolina line. And then Bartman, he has made it all the way to the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Saw where he kind of on his videos, he had put out a tour there of Fontana uh, Resort area and did a good job with that. And so that means he is uh, in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. So some new starts we got coming up this week from our support list. We got Travis Lund to be starting. Yolo starting, Mike and Fran Allen is starting, and Canvas Back will be starting. So if you are uh, signed up for the list, make sure that you do have some social media there. We've got a lot of folks that don't have social media links, so that's the way that the hiker community uh, keeps up with you, if not through this channel, through your social media links, and that's how they communicate with you and give you the uh, the attaboy, atta girl, all the way to, throughout the course of your hike. So make sure you put those links there. If for some reason you don't have time to do it, send them to me. I'll be glad to update that for you. Uh, and if you're not on the list, be sure and get on the list. And the way to do that, there's a link down below in the description section that allows you to go right to that link, as well as that support list for the hiker community. There's also a link down below where you can go and find uh, each and every person that is on that list. So we did have a hiker that uh, that is our first off trail or first injury casualty of the year, and that was Hopper. So Hopper was on his Bammer to Baxter, meaning he's starting on the Penhody Trail, and then he's going to intersect there with the Benton Mackay, and which intersects there at Springer with the Appalachian Trail, and continue on north all the way to Katahdin. And unfortunately, he never made it uh, past mile marker 60 on the Penhody. He got off, had to get off due to an injury. Apparently, he was trying to negotiate around a blowdown, and he went down the hill, slipped and fell on the wet leaves and pine needles and rocks, and he just kind of did a face plant, uh, but he also jacked up his knee and his hip. So uh, he's had to go back to the uh, orthopedic uh, doctor on that and see when he can get healed up and when he can get back out there on the trail. So best of luck to you, Hopper. Be sure and keep in touch with us. Sorry that happened to you, but um, – but looking forward to you getting back out there on the trail and then some new starts from with the atc registration we've got so we are maxed out now for three days last week it was just two now we've maxed out with three days with over 50 hikers starting on one day so uh those are march 1st uh, march 20th and april 1st 
So we got, and we've also got two more days that are closing in fast on that. So looks like we'll at least have five days that are maxed out this year. And I suspect we'll have more than that. And so, you know, maxed out, meaning the carrying capacity is over 50 hikers for the trail starting that particular day, uh, either from Springer or Amicola Falls State Park. Uh, of course, I've always thought that 50 hikers was really too many hikers to be considered the maximum. I, I really think it should be half of that because none of the shelters up there can, can take um, even – half of those hikers up there so they get spread out a lot and that kind of helps things out a lot but in any case that is what the uh, atc has indicated is the maximum that the trail can take however it doesn't mean they stop registering people it doesn't mean they stop allowing people uh, as we've talked about before anywhere from 10 to 25 percent of people actually don't register their hike so those are just the known registrations speaking of the known registrations so uh, we continue to increase in those last week we had 1878 and this week no bow we are up to 2075 for a 197 hiker increase uh, over the past two weeks. And then since we didn't do a update last week, flip-floppers have gone from 101 to 112 for 11 hiker increase, and SOBO registrations are up from 61 to 67 for, for six additional hikers that have signed up a little early for really flip-flopper and SOBO season for folks to be signing up. And there will still continue to be people signing up even for NOBO season. Uh, one of the things that happens down at Amicola Falls State Park, if you go down there uh, and you check in down there and you're not registered, they will encourage you to register down there with the ATC. So just because you check in with a logbook does not mean that you are uh, ch that you are registering, but they'll encourage you to go and do that online. So our total last week was 2,040, and we are up uh, uh, we are up 214. From that this week. Uh, however, the continue we continue to trend down from where we have been uh, in seasons past. So, um, you know, 2023, we've got less folks that are registering than they did in 2022 and 2021, 2020. So, 2020 after the pandemic, 2021. All those were kind of going up, and now it's starting to kind of go down a little bit. So we'll see when we get more data ports each year. We'll see how that continues, where that goes. Probably going to kind of level out at some point in time, certain year, but be interesting to track that as we continue to uh, go on throughout the years. Did contact Amicola Falls State Park this morning. We've had about 27 so far that have stepped off. Um, for their NOBO hikes, there have been, and that's total uh, th for this year, for 2023. Uh, they do not have bag tags yet from the ATC, so they have they were promised those this week, and they never showed up. Uh, so uh, hopefully those will show up next week. Uh, they continue to, the park staff continue to register hikers there up until the first or second week in February when that registration will move a couple buildings up uh, and then the Georgia Club will start registering people, uh, and if they have them, handing out bag tags um, for their the beginning of their hike. So before we get to the news section of the channel today, uh, just uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, leave a comment. I just love answering your comments, love getting all your comments. They're always so great. Uh, the ones that aren't so great, I block them and get them out of here. So, uh, But there's really not too many of those. But give me a thumbs up. All that really helps the channel, helps bring other people into it. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can always give me a super thanks, and that's down below. That helps support the channel uh, and helps me to uh, grow the channel and and you know bring more quality to you but also help hikers and people out there and if you really really like what i do uh i'd encourage you to join my patreon account there's some things that come along with that and there's different levels there so that link is down below as well 
as up on the banner up here mm-hmm. for joining that. So appreciate all everything that y'all do to keep me spurred on. All those keep me spurred on and they help me improve the channel, but they, they keep me going in what I do and, and putting this together each week. So some news we got out there. I got word that the pack scale at the visitor center was stolen. Now, why somebody wants a pack scale, I have no idea. It's, you know, it's like zero to 80 or something like that. So nobody's fishing uh, heavyweight fish like that. Nobody, you know, we're way far in for big saltwater heavy fish like that. So I don't have no clue as to why somebody would want to steal that thing, but somebody did. Maybe there's memorabilia, but it's not much memorabilia because it's brand new every year. So anyway, somebody stole it and they're having their uh, hikers are being asked to guess their pack weight. So that's not too good. Uh, good a way to do it. If you ask me, they just need to go ahead and get some more, get another scale and take it in at night or put it somewhere where people We'll see it and can look after it and or just hang just bring it inside wherever people are registering. That's what the Georgia Club does when they're registering. So it never gets out of somebody's sight. So hopefully uh they'll get something else and we'll get some accurate pack weight. So we do have a few pack weights from folks that have sent in a picture of the registration page. So uh I ask that uh, people do that when you first get checked in, send me a picture of the registration page. Uh, they're not going to want you to do that down there because they don't want the private, the information, the people's, uh, uh, addresses stuff to get out. I I always blank those out. So that's not going to happen, uh, with me. So, but, and really what I'm looking at is the pack weight. So if you're not comfortable with that, you can black out the whole thing yourself and send it to me. uh, It does also on the left-hand column, tell me how many hikers we're up to. And then on the right hand, far right hand column, it gives me the pack weight. So right now we had an average of about 28 pounds plus with a low of 30 and a high of 41 in the sampling that I had. And there were two hikers on there that they did not comment uh, or they did not give their pack weights other than to say it's too much or, uh, you know, that they realize they got too much pack weight. So they didn't even want to put their numbers down, which is fine. But it's always good to have that information. Anyway, people typically will start shedding weight uh, as they realize things that they don't need as they move up the trail. So we are up to around 140 hikers that have signed up for the support list. So if you haven't signed up for it yet and you want to be a part of it, please go and do that. Uh, We've also got uh, something that's really important. And right now the Fresh Ground and the Leapfrog Cafe are in the midst of doing a fundraiser uh, for the year. So the idea is that uh, he, you know, Fresh Ground is probably the quintessential trail angel out there and he goes and feeds people and, uh, you know, doesn't do mass hiker feeds. He's just one person out there. But every time I've ever been around Fresh Ground and any time I've ever heard anybody comment, the food is just so good that he feeds you. And it's not necessarily nothing special, but you would be amazed how good a one of his grilled cheese sandwiches taste out there in the middle of nowhere when you've been hiking all day. So uh, it's hot food. He's got hot coffee. Uh, so it's really good. And you never, never know what you're going to get from him. But but that really helps hikers out there. And it just really is such a boost for them. So he's having a fundraiser to support that. Uh, he does that each year. This is his 11th year doing it. So if you've ever uh, been the recipient of fresh ground hospitality, then I'd encourage you to go and send in something to him. If you're a through hiker, possibly you're going to run into him, send in something for him, but just pay it forward for the next hikers that are out there as well. And the hiker community has always come through and, and given him what he's needed to keep hikers out there to, to keep what he's doing out there to keep hikers fed out there on the trail to give just that little bit of home cooking uh, that just makes everybody feel so good. So uh, you can go to his website and and you can just go to Facebook and look up uh, Fresh Ground and Leapfrog Cafe and there'll be numerous ways you can give there through Venmo and PayPal and Carrier Pigeon taking a check to him and sending it to his home. He's got people back home that are getting intercepting those checks and putting them in the bank for him. So there's just a, a no reason why you can't get him something there. 
you could actually visit him out there on the trail and bring it to him. So he would love to see each and every person with a hiker community, and he would he would feed you as well. And and that's one thing about Fresh Ground is is that he feeds anybody that walks up, whether they're a hiker or not. So that is uh, his mission. That's his ministry, and it it is really something that is is really neat. And uh, and I've been the recipient of on numerous occasions, and um, never never let me down on that. And so I uh, had a uh, another trail angel and a friend of mine sent in a notice, and that was emoji, and she brought to my attention a video that had recently been posted about uh, the Over Mountain Shelter. So apparently the powers that be, and that being the National Park Service, uh, because it is on their land, but also the Appalachian Trail Conservancy, the ATC, have decided that they are going to tear down the Overmountain Shelter. They're not going to try to save it, even though there's been numerous people that have come forward that have want to give up their time, that want to give up their money to save the Overmountain Shelter. It is really one of the most iconic shelters out there on the trail. And um, it just baffles my mind why they would not try to salvage such an icon. You know, they claim that it's beyond salvageable, but... I'm just going to tell you if they can salvage the the uh, the the church there. I can't remember the name of it. The church there in Paris that just completely burned and collapsed on itself. Uh, they can salvage the Leaning Tower Pisa. Uh, there's just there's no reason why a barn cannot be reinforced and fixed to where it's it's salvageable and it can be utilized again. But apparently the powers that be feel it's not. I'm sure that's a driving force behind uh, the, the, or the driving force behind it has a lot to do with the ATC. Uh, the reasons that they're given are really disingenuous and some of them are just unbelievable. Uh, so there's a video. I'm going to leave a link to that video down below where you can go and watch and listen to them, and you'll realize pretty quickly some of the things, particularly those that are coming out of those the ATC's mouths and the representatives there are not based on uh, you know how they do other shelters uh, throughout the course of the of the Appalachian Trail. So a lot of things that are just um, a double speak, if you will. Uh, but I would encourage you also, uh, right now, they are getting ready to start a comment period. So I would encourage you to start to go and comment on on how you feel about it. That link is down below as well. Make no mistake about it. The ATC could care less about the hiker experience. What they're all about is the treadway. They're singularly focused on the treadway. They're not concerned with hikers. If you want an organization that is involved with the hikers on the Appalachian Trail, then you need to go and send your money to ALDA. That's the Appalachian Long Distance Hikers Association. They care about hikers. Uh, they feed hikers out there on the trail occasionally. Uh, they do it trail days. Uh, they put on classes for hikers. Um, so none of that is coming from the ATC. The ATC has never fed hikers, not to my knowledge out there, not at trail days. I've never seen them feed them on the trail anywhere. As a matter of fact, the ATC wants trail angels and hiker feeds to go away. Uh, so give your money to Alda. Uh, you can go to the website. Uh, I'll, uh, leave a link as well to that down, uh, down below in the description section. The only way the ATC is ever going to care about hikers is if we do a grassroots effort and we we make it difficult for them, make our voices heard, stop giving to the ATC if you already do, make your voice heard, and that's the only way, only thing that they're going to understand. Maybe also if they shed some of these many mouths that they're feeding there, that that you're, if you give to the ATC, that your donations go to feeding all these massive amounts of employees. Maybe if they would cut back on that some, that things like these projects that are iconic, they could spend the money on things like that. Personally, I think they could spend the money on it anyway. I'm constantly seeing where they got a million dollar grant here, a $500,000 grant here. Uh, it's not going to take $500,000 to fix that shelter there. Uh, so I'd encourage you to go to that. There's a, that public hearing is going to be online through a uh, 
it's not a Zoom link. It's a Microsoft Teams link. But anybody can go to it. That's going to be on the 24th. So uh, I would encourage you to tune in. I'll leave that link down below and comment. Uh, and then also go and you can comment to them separately. You can comment to the National Forest Service in that area separately. I believe it's the Pisgah National Forest Service. I'll try to find a link and leave that down below as well. But go and comment to them Um and then there was a person that was several years ago when they first closed the shelter, this person contacted me and they were considering having one of these shows uh, that they were part producer on like this old house or something like that coming in and renovating it and completely repairing that shelter. Uh, I lost touch with that person over the years. So if that person is still watching this channel, uh, please contact me. Love to chat with you again about maybe how we can get that involved and, uh, right now, my understanding is the ATC is wanting to get it torn down this spring. And so we've got a short time to act, uh, but it's going to take a, a grassroots effort to get people to act and let them know that. So that project website uh, has been created. I'll leave that link down below. Please go to that. The Microsoft Teams meeting is going to be at 7 p.m. on January 25th. And you can use that link down below to join that. You know, it's just really, really disappointing to see things like this happen. I mean, slowly but surely, the ATC, and, and, and they do it under the auspices of, you know, this is what's best for the hikers, or this is what's best for the trail, or, or this, uh, we got no control, this other organizations won't do it. Slowly but surely, they are taking away more and more of the icons of the trail. Uh, the Glastonbury Fire Tower is in Vermont is closed now. They claimed the FAA closed it due to structural problems. I was in there, and there's not a structural problem with it. Now, I'm not a structural engineer. Didn't stay in a Holiday Inn Express last night, but I've been around construction all my life, and there was not anything wrong. That fire tower is in a whole lot better shape than other fire towers. So, uh, But they've closed that, so you can't go up uh, up there. Uh, they've rerouted the AT away from the iconic Stratton Pond there in Vermont, so uh, no more uh, – you know, going past it and seeing the sunrise or the sunset that we experienced there while we while I was hiking out there. Heck, they won't even let us play Frogger up on New York on the Palisades Parkway anymore. They've rerouted around that as well. And now they're doing they're tearing down the over mountain shelter. So it's just gonna be a few a, a few short years before the ATC is gonna make sure that everything we're doing uh is just gonna be safe and uh and it's the AT is going to wind up becoming just a giant concrete or asphalt road walk uh, if they had their way. So um, I'd encourage you to go to that. It's very disappointing to, for me, and I know countless other folks who have who have hiked through there. Not only is through hikers, but section hikers. So please go and be a part of that. It's the only way any kind of change has a possibility uh, of happening is if we uh, let them know our voices and by being there, by leaving comments, and by stopping to support them until they make some changes with the head leadership. Well, folks, that's all I got this week. As always, appreciate you, and we'll see you out there.